looking at question number 56, it is required to obtain the value of uh, x. But what it was given that angle S R U is 59 degree. We have it this way. 2x plus 1 degree. And here we have 59 degree. R U S M N O P. So, okay. These two lines being equal, and this place 59 degree. So, to obtain the value of x a, all we need to do, we, we see that 59, this angle, angle PQU gives us same value as angle QRU, which is 180 minus 59 degree and that will give us 121 degree so and 2x plus 1 and the uh, angle p q u they are corresponding angles which is 120 degree and we have 2x plus 1 to be 121 degree and from here 2x equals to 120 degree and we obtain the value of x to be 60 degree so the correct answer for the question is 60 degree. Number 57. If 4 is power 4m plus 1 multiplied by 64 is power 1 plus m equals 1 over 64, is required to obtain the value of m here. And uh, we know that four, 64 is 4 is power 3. So we have 4 is power 4m plus 1 multiplied by 4 raised to the power 3 into 1 plus m equals to 4 raised to the power minus 3. And uh, applying the law of indices here, we have 4m plus 1 plus 3 plus 3m equals to minus 3. So simplifying that, 7m, 7m here equals to minus 3 minus 4, which is that m equals to minus 7 over 7, which is minus 1. And that makes the correct option in that question to be option C. Now, from the question, we are told that p equals to 2q, 2r equals to 3q. So we want to express p, uh, 2p r square in terms of q. So from here, we can obtain the value of r. We can make r a subject here. Yeah? r equals to 3 over 2q. From 2, r equals to 3p. And uh, from p equals to 2q. q equals to p over 2. Call this equation 1. Call this equation 2. So we can substitute p over 2 in q. And we obtain r to be 3 over 2 into p 3 over 2 into p over 2. That gives us 3p over 4. So, to obtain 2p r squared, 2p r squared now gives us 2 into p into 3p over 4 raised to power 2. So, and that gives us 2p multiplied by 9p squared over 16. 2 here 1, 2 here 8. And the result here gives us 9p cube over 8. And the correct option there is option C. Which of the following is not a measure of dispersion? You know in statistics we have measure of central tendency, measure of dispersion, measure of location. And uh, looking at the options here, mean deviation is a measure of dispersion, range is a measure of dispersion, variance is a measure of dispersion, while percentile is a measure of location. So the 
option that stands odd among the options there, which is not a measure of dispersion, is percentile, which is option B. So the correct answer here is option B. Number 60, evaluate bar 3.0134 minus bar 2.2035. Now, difference of logarithms. So we have bar 3.0134 minus bar 2.2035. Now, 14 minus 5 here gives us 9. 12 minus 5 gives us 9. 0 minus 0, 0. We borrow 1. We have 10 minus 2, 8. And we have here bar 4 minus bar 2. That gives us bar 2. And the answer gives us bar 2.8099, which corresponds to option C as the correct answer. Okay, 2 whole number 1 over 4 minus 1 over 3 divided by 3 whole number 3 over 4. Let's handle the bracket first. The LCM there will be 4. And then this 2 whole number 1 over 4 is the same as 9 over 4. So with the LCM, the LCM is 12. And the 4 in 12 is 3. 3 multiplying 9, that gives us 27. 27 minus 4 divided by 4 times 3, 12, 15 over 4. So 27 minus 4 gives 23 over 12. Then multiplying 4 over 15. 4 here, 1 here 3 and the answer gives 23 over 45 that makes the correct option to be option d question number 62 want to evaluate log 25 plus log 32 minus log 8 and in this case we have it as log 25 multiplied by 32 divided by 8 and that gives us log 100 base 10, which is log 10 raised to power 2 base 10. And that gives 2 log 10 base 10. Log 10 base 10 gives us 1. And the result is 2 times 1, which is 2. So that makes the correct option there to be option A. Question number 63. If P ratio P to Q, ratio P to Q is 10 to 21, ratio Q to R, is a 6 to 5. Then we want to find the ratio of a P to R. Look at it. We have P to Q to be 10 over 21 and the Q to R to be 6 over 5. So what do we do to make the Q in the two places to have equal values? We can multiply by we can multiply by we can multiply this by 2 we multiply this by 7. So that makes P to Q to be 20 over 42 and Q to R to be 42 over 35. So with this now, we can now say that ratio P to Q to R equals to 20, ratio 20 to 42 to 35. And ratio P to R, that gives ratio 20 to 35, which is ratio 4 to 7. That's the ratio of P to R, which grant us the option B as the correct answer. Question 64. K is given as set T such that minus T is less than T, T is less than or equals to 5. And the member of K, the members of set K in this case will be minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And L. The set of L. T such that minus 5 is less than or equals to T. T is less than 3. And the members of L will be minus 5, minus 4, minus 3, minus 1, 0, 1, 2. So the universal set here is a set T ranges from minus 6 to 7. So we have minus 6, minus 5, minus 4, minus 3, minus 1, uh, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 
four, five, six as the elements of the universal set. So k complement set of k complement here is going to give us minus six, minus five, minus four, minus three, minus two, and six. So intersecting k complement with set L. That now gives us that gives us K complement and L. That gives minus five, minus four, minus three, and that's all. So that makes the option the correct option here to be option C. Question 65. In that place, we want to find the intersection of X, intersection Y complement, intersection Z complement. And looking at the diagram, we see that Y complement comprises the elements outside set X, eh, outside set Y, and Z complement are the elements completely outside Z, Z. So, if we are now intersecting that with set X, the result will now give us one set of 1 and 6, which is option A as the correct answer. Now, 66. We want to find the sum to infinity of this set 6, 3 over 2, 3 over 8. Now, we need to obtain the ratio First, the common ratio here is um, 3 over 8 divided by 3 over 2. That gives us 3 over 8 multiplied by 2 over 3, which is 1 over 4. And the uh, sum to infinity, we have it as a over 1 minus r, which is 6 over 1 minus 1 over 4, and that's 6 over 1 over 3. And the answer, 6 over 3 over 4. And the answer here gives us 6 multiplied by 4 over 3. The answer gives 8, which makes option B the correct answer. We want to simplify x cubed y5 over x raised to the power 4, y raised to the power 4 plus x raised to the power 3, y raised to the power 3. So, considering the denominator here, we can factorize x cubed, y cubed. And we have x cubed, y raised to the power 5 over x cubed, y cubed into xy plus 1. So, dividing the numerator with what we have, or factor of the denominator. So, this cancelling this. So, we have here y raised to the power 2 over xy plus 1. And that matches option C as the correct answer. Number 68. We want to solve the equation x plus 2 into x plus 3 plus 12. x plus 2 into x plus 3 equals to 12. Then, we can open the bracket here such that we have x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals to 12. And simplifying that, we have x squared plus 5x minus 6 equals to 0. And here, what do we need to do here? We can factorize. We have x squared plus 6x minus x minus 6 equals to 0. So we have x into x plus 6 minus 1 into x plus 6 equals 0. So factorizing x plus 6, we have x plus 6 into x minus 1 equals 0, which indicates that x plus 6 equals 0 or x minus 1 equals 0. And that tells us that x equals to minus 6 or 1. And that matches option E as the correct answer for the question. We want to make G the subject of the formula. 
in root f raised to the power 1 over 4 equals that. So we can multiply both sides by h to have h f raised to the power 1 over 4 to be root g. And squaring both sides, we have h square f raised to the power 1 over 4 square to be g, whereby the result gives g equals to f raised to the power 1 over 2 h squared, which matches with option A. Number 17, we have x equals to 3y plus 5 over 2. And we were told that x equals to 1 whole number 1 over 2, which is 3 over 2. So, in this case, we have 3 over 2 equals to 3y plus 5 over 2. 2 cancels 2 here. And 3y equals to minus 2. And y equals to minus 2 over 3. Which makes the correct option there to be option A. Number 71. Looking at this diagram, the dimensions given, the length, it indicates that the, the dimensions here makes it, uh, give us a Pythagorean triple, which shows that the triangle is automatically a right-angled triangle. And in such a case, the area there simply uh, the area of into base times height is much applicable here. And we have it as half into 4 multiplied by 3. And the area gives us 6 square centimeter. And that matches option C as the correct answer. Number 72. We want to determine the volume of a cone. The vertical height is 12 centimeter, base radius 7 centimeter. So, the volume of a cone is 1 over 3 pi r squared h. And that gives 1 over 3 into 22 over 7, multiplied by 7, multiplied by 7, multiplied by height, 12 centimeter. And they're simplifying that for 7, 7. So, we now have it as 22 multiplied by 28. 22 times 28. That gives 616 square centimeter. 616 square centimeter, which matches with option C as the correct answer. Number 73. In that figure, we want to obtain the value of angle QRS. We can obtain the value of angle QPS first, being a triangle, being a triangle, and the angle QPS gives us 180 degree minus uh, 56 plus uh, 52. That gives us 180 minus 108, which is 72 degree. So to obtain angle QRS, angle QRS, the, the quadrilateral QPRS is a cyclic triangle. So the opposite sides of cyclic, uh, uh, the opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary. So that now makes our QRS to be 180 degree minus 72 degree. And that gives us 108 degree, which makes option D the correct option for the question. Number 74. We, we were told that in this diagram, the angle of area at the center is 105 degree. And then um, the radii, or the two radii there, we have radius 1 to be 14 centimeter. The other radius is 10 centimeter. So to obtain the area of the shaded portion, being a sector there, two concentric sectors here, so the area here is going to be theta over 360 pi big R square minus small r square. That gives us 105 over 360 multiplied by 22. Okay, multiply by pi into 14 square minus 10 square. And with this, we have it as 105 over 360 multiplied by 24 
multiplied by 4 pi. So, 24 in 360 is 15. 15 in 105 is 7. And the result gives 28 pi square centimeter, which matches with option D as the correct answer. In number 75, number 75, it is required to determine the value of angle ACB. And uh, to obtain angle ACB, we can first obtain angle DBC. Angle DBC, we see that it gives us the same value as angle CAD. Angle DAC, which is 44 degree. Angles are the same segment. So to obtain angle ACD, angle ACD now, it's now going to be 180 degree minus 26 plus 50 plus 44. And that gives us 180 minus 110 degree. And the result gives us 70 degree, which is option E as the correct option in the question. In question number 76, to obtain the value of x here, we see that in that place, line AB equals line AC, and the line BD equals line DC. Automatically, angle ABD will give us same value as angle DCA, which will be x. So, in this place, Exterior angle in a quadrilateral, it gives us 40 plus x plus x equals to 102 degree. And 2x now equals to 62 degree, which makes the value of x to be 31 degree. And that is option B as the correct option. Number 77. Determine the range of the following set of numbers. The numbers there, the range is just the difference between the least, the least number in the data and the biggest number. So in that case, the biggest number is 15, and the least there is 4. The least is 3. So, the range now gives 15 minus 3, which is 12. And that is option E. Number 77. Determine the range of the following set of numbers. The numbers there, the range is just the difference between the least, the least number in the data and the biggest number. So, in that case, the biggest number is 15, and the least there is 4. The least is 3. So, the range now gives 15 minus 3, which is 12, and that is option E. So, number 78, we rearrange the numbers given in the data. So, we have 11. 13, 14, 14, 14, 15, 15, 15, 16, 16, 17, 20. So we have 11 numbers given in the data. And uh, the middle one there is uh, 15. So the median here, the median is simply 15, which is option D in the question. We have to differentiate with respect to x, 3x plus 5 raised to power 2. If we are to differentiate this with respect to x, d the x of 3x plus 5 raised to power 2 will give us 2 into 3x plus 5 multiplied by 3. And this gives us 6 into 3x plus 5. And that is 18x plus 30. And that matches option C 
in the options there. Number 80. Number 80. We are told that if the y dx equals 2x squared plus 3x, we want to find the function y. So this is uh, this requires the integration of the of the given derivative. So here, integral the y equals integral 2x squared plus 3x the x. And integrating this, we have 2 over 3 s cubed plus 3 over 2 x squared plus the constant. And that gives us option. That's the correct option there. Now is option C. 2 over 3 x cubed plus 3 over 2 x squared plus C. That's option C. Number 81. The radius of a sphere is 6 cm. Find the rate of increase of the surface area when the radius increases at this. The area of a sphere is given as 4 pi r squared. Differentiating the area with respect to r. The a equals 4 pi r multiplied by 2. That gives, okay, dr. That gives 8 pi r dr. That's our dA. So, for the rate, that means it increases with time. So, we have it as dA dt to be 8 pi r dr dt. So, the rate of increase now is 0 0.1. And that gives us 8 pi. The value of the radius there is 6. And the r dt is 0 0.1. By the time we multiply that out, it gives us 4.8 pi square centimeter per second. And that matches with option C. Number 82. A matrix P equals A, B, C, D. Is such that P transpose equals minus P. Where P transpose is the transpose of uh, P. And the question says, if B is 1, then what is P? So looking at what we have here, P transpose equals minus P indicates P is a skewed symmetric matrix, whereby the transpose of a matrix is the, neg is the negation of the matrix. So in this place, if B is 1, then we now see that the matrix that measures or that meets up with this, whereby we have 0, 1, minus 1, 0. If we have, in this case, the transpose of P will give us 0, minus 1, 1, 0. Which, well, which indicates that P equals to minus P transpose, and P transpose equals to minus P. So the correct option here is option B. Number 83, a sector of example has an area of 55 square centimeter. The area here is 55 square centimeter. And the radius of the circle is 10 centimeters. Calculate the angle of the sector. So for the, uh, for the area of a circle, area is given as theta over 360 pi r squared. So 55 equals to 3 over 360 multiplied by 22 over 7 multiplied by 10 multiplied by 10. So to obtain our Theta here, theta equals to 55 multiplied by 360 multiplied by 7 over 2,200. And solving that, the value of theta gives us 63 degree, which is option B in the question. Number 84, 
we are given s to be ut plus half a t squared. And it is required to make t the subject of the formula. In this place, t, the expression is a quadratic expression. And to make it easier, we we'll make use of a quadratic formula. So, and here we have half a t squared plus ut minus s equals to zero. Making the terms to be on one side of the equation side. And here, our a could be equated with half a t squared, half a, b as u, and c as minus s. Using the quadratic formula here, we have t to be minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And uh, substituting the values in the formula here, we have minus u plus or minus square root of u square minus 4 into half a multiplied by minus s. So here 2 over 2 into half a. So 2 cancels 2 here. So t now gives us minus u plus or minus square root of u square plus 2as over a. So, and that matches option D in the question. Question 85. We want to simplify x squared minus 1 over x squared minus 2x squared minus x minus 2. In this case, we need to factorize both the numerator and the denominator. So that we have x squared minus 1 over x squared minus x. Okay, x squared minus x gives us minus x. But we can still rearrange as x squared minus x minus 2x squared minus 2. So, and this gives us x plus 1 into x minus 1 over x into x minus 1 minus 2 into x squared minus 1. And with this, we have the result as x plus 1 into x minus 1 over x into x minus 1 minus 2 into x minus 1 into x plus 1. Whereby we can factorize x minus 1 from here. We have x plus 1 into x minus 1 over x minus 1 into x minus 2x minus 2. And x minus 1 cancels x minus 1. So the result here gives x plus 1 over x minus 2x, that's minus x minus 2. And the result here simply gives us minus into x minus 1 over x plus 2. Or minus into x plus 1 over x plus 2. Can you subscribe to this channel for more questions? Number 86. If the second term of a GP is this, the n term of a GP is expressed as a raised power n minus 1. And the second term, which is a r, that is 8 over 9. The sixth term, which is a raised to the power 5, that, that's 4 whole number 1 over 2, which is 9 over 2. The common ratio. So we can divide equation 1 by equation 2. So from here, we can have AR square, AR5 over AR equals to 9 over 2 divided by 8 over 9. And with that, we have R raised to the power 4 to be 9 over 2 
multiplied by 9 over 8. And that gives us 81 over 16. And that shows that r over 4 equals to 3 over 2 raised to power 4. And here, r equals to 3 over 2. So the correct option in that question is option B. Question number 87. In the diagram, the diagram here, we have a circle. And for the circle, we have a diameter. We have a chord. So here, NH. NH is 8 centimeter. Around here, we have the center. So, and we have EG. We have F. So, the question asks us to find FH. How do we go about this? But we have our EG to be 24 centimeter, and FH is perpendicular to EG, telling us that diameter FH divides EG equally, making each of the parts to be 12 centimeter. And how do we find FN? To start with, we see that let Fn be x. x multiplied by 8 equals to 12 multiplied by 12. So x now equals to 12 times 12 over 8. 4 here, 2, 3, 6. Okay, 4 here, 2, 4 here, 3, 2 here, 1, 2 here, 6. So x equals to 18 centimeter but to obtain fn fn is going to be x plus 8 which is 18 plus 8 and that gives 26 centimeter and that is option b number 88 we have here a common tangent to two circles whereby the radius of a circle here is 3 cm. The radius of the other circle is 2 cm. They have a common line that joins the centers and they have a common tangent. So, we have here two circles with the bigger circle having radius 3 cm, the smaller circle with radius 2 cm. They have common tangent of length 25 cm. So in this case, to obtain the length, the length xy, the line which connects the two centers of the circle, we can draw a parallel line to xy from joining, the, joining a point on the radius of the bigger circle to the point on anywhere the common tangent touches the smaller circle. And in such a case, the, the radius of the bigger circle could be divided into two parts, which is two centimeter and one centimeter. So to obtain length xn, which is parallel to line pn. So we have our pn square to be 25 square plus 1 square, and that gives us 625 plus 1. So Pn equals to the square root of 626 in centimeter, which matches with option B as the correct answer. In number 89, a side of a rhombus is 2 centimeter in length. And when we have our rhombus that way, the side being 2 cm, and one of the angles is 60 degrees. So, the, here we are required to find the length of the diagonal facing the angle. Looking at what we have here, already we can see that the part of the rhombus has formed an isosceles triangle. And then with this angle 60 degree here, the base angles here will give us 60 degree each. So with that now, that means the side now has formed an equilateral triangle, meaning that the diagonal now will be 2 
centimeter and the correct option there is option a two centimeter number 90 show that or simplify sine squared x over 1 plus cos x plus sine squared x over 1 minus cos x. In this case, what we need to, to do, we'll find the LCM, which is 1 minus cos squared x, and then uh, we can factorize sine squared x. So here we have 1 minus cos x plus 1 plus cos x. And from there, we have sine squared x. Meanwhile, 1 minus cos squared x is also sine squared x. So into 2. Cos x minus cos x plus cos x is gone. 1 plus 1, 2. And the result gives us 2, which is option E. Question 91. The derivative of sine theta over cos theta. So, we want to find the derivative with respect to theta. And in this case, the d sine theta over cos theta, d theta, gives us cos theta into the derivative of sine theta that gives us cos theta minus sine theta. Derivative of cos theta gives us minus sine theta over cos squared theta. And here we have cos squared theta plus sine squared theta over cos squared theta. But note that cos squared theta plus sine squared theta equals to 1. And the result gives 1 over cos squared theta. And the 1 over cos squared theta is the same as sec squared theta, which is option A from the question. 92. In how many ways can the letters of the word acceptance be arranged? Acceptance. We see that the word acceptance has 10 letters. And from there, we have 10 factorial already. But looking at the word acceptance, there are some letters that were in repetition. Letter A appears twice. That's over 2 factorial. Letter C appears 3 times. That's over 3 factorial. Letter E appears twice. That's over 2 factorial. And with that, we have the arrangement. And this matches with option A in the question. So, mean that option A is the correct answer.